So you finish the game, and now what? Well, actually, there's a ton of stuff to do in Assassin's Creed Origins once you finish the main story missions or hit the max level. I'll tell you all the activities in this video. If you like that, then the like would be super appreciated, and let's go. Assassin's Creed Origins is huge, and even once you finish the main story missions and hit the max level, you still haven't explored every region yet. Also cool is that the activities I will mention still reward you with XP at the max level, since you can just refill your bar and earn an ability point every time your bar is full. And it's great because it makes completing all the objectives that are left in the world still feel rewarding. And it's also needed because you will still need a lot of ability points to unlock all the skills once you are level 40. Before I tell you about some regular activities, I first want to mention some endgame specific challenges that also reward you with nice rewards. One of the awesome things you can do is kill the Vor war elephants that have their own camps in the world. One war elephant will even reward you with an awesome unique outfit and you will also get an achievement or trophy for killing these big guys. The fights are awesome and unique as well, something different and it shows you once again that the combat in Assassin's Creed Origins is greatly improved and that you need some tactics to survive. You find the war elephants over here. One is here. Here and here in the map. Challenging fights against unique enemies, the same can be said for the arena battles, by far my favorite activity in the game. Here it's also smart to go in at a high level to do the most amount of damage against the bosses that are also pretty high level. There's an arena in Crocodilopolis, that name, that name, and in Serene for max level players and these fights can be tough since you can't use your own weapon. So it's mostly about your raw skill, although unlocking some of the warrior abilities totally helps. When the game director said that they spent a lot of time working on these bosses, he totally meant it and you see that when fighting them. They have their own personalities, look and fight like no other boss in Assassin's Creed Origins, so I will not spoil any of the bosses you will fight like in this footage you see one of the early bosses you will fight, but totally Try this out, it's really an awesome experience. Combine that with the fact that there's a ton of variation in terms of the arena itself as well, that there is an elite mode once you beat all the bosses for the first time, so you can really test your skills there. You can really get a lot out of this activity and also nice rewards. You get nice money, XP, exclusive outfits from defeating these bosses, so it's totally worth it. Again, my favorite activity in the game. And the cool part is later on, early 2018, they will add a horde mode with unlimited waves and and probably bosses in there as well so that's gonna be a fun time right now it's just yeah kill three waves or a boss but it's still a lot of fun you would almost forget that there is also a hippodrome with horse racing in Assassin's Creed Origins. These challenges do not require you to be a max level or something, but are something that you can do to earn some nice legendary mounts in the game. The horse racing is really an activity like no other in Assassin's Creed Origins and something I overlooked to be honest. So I tried it when I first get there, you get there pretty early on in the game. But now, once I hit the max level, I will go back to earn these awesome exclusive mounts. And those mounts do not really impact the power of your character. If you want to upgrade the power of your character, and of course you want to do that once you hit the max level, it's great to upgrade your gear. If you dismantled a ton of your weapons for crafting materials, you probably already have a lot of ore and a lot of wood, so you only need a lot of leather. So go out and hunt on animals to get that leather, upgrade your gear that way, and if you're fully upgraded, the other activities will Will become easier to complete. One of the first things I did after finishing the main story mission was go after the roaming Violake bosses in the world. There are two on the max level and they all reward you with nice legendary loot and in the end even this awesome Black Hood outfit. While these fights are not as unique as the arena bosses, they still look and feel completely different with their own weapon. And it still is a different fight because they're in the open world, so you can fight them with your own weapons and they might have allies to help them. I have a couple of tips up on how to defeat these bosses, so totally check that out if you're having trouble. But it's really an awesome endgame activity. I kinda miss them at this point. I love the fact that there were like these big bosses, these strong bosses hunting you. 
and now they're not there. So I hope they return at some point, that they will just introduce new roaming bosses in the game. Another activity that will give you in the end an awesome outfit are these stone circles and then later the tombs to get the 50 silica. Now of course talking about the Aizu outfit, my favorite outfit in Assassin's Creed Origins. You probably already know this but I made a video on how to get this awesome outfit but the short answer is complete all the stone circles and a ton of the tombs to get a 50 silica. Tombs also give you ability points by the way and like I said they're really needed to unlock all the skills at the max level. Because even on the max level you still need a ton of ability points to complete the Vu ability line. Tombs can also be in the areas you have not discovered yet so go ride that horse, plunder these dark tombs for nice loot and an ability points and also to get the Aizu armor. By the way if you wait to do this on level 40 all the items that will drop from the tombs will be level 40 as well. Just a quick tip. Of course, if you want the Aizu armor as fast as possible, I also wanted it earlier than level 40. Still though, if you think, oh, I can wait with the tombs, just do it till the max level because all the loot you will get will be for level 40. So you can sell it at a higher price or of course use it for yourself. Speaking of loot, a nice way to earn some legendary loot are the puzzles that you can find in the many locations in the world. After you scan the environment, grab the puzzle, you need to go to a certain area in the map and get a rare or legendary weapon. It's super smart to do this on the max level since all the items you will pick up are for level 40 or are for the level you are on. So if you are the max level, you get them on level 40. So so totally go and complete all the puzzles to get some nice loot on the max level. When you hit the max level there are probably a ton of side quests that you have not finished yet and they all give some nice rewards in terms of XP to unlock those new ability points and are simply fun to play because of the story and will maybe bring you to locations or forts that you have not completed yet. That's of course also something you can do on the max level or after you finish the game. Go to the question marks on the map, explore the location, complete them to get some nice XP as well. I would first do the side quest though because you might end up in one of the many forts and just can combine it by completing the area and also completing the side quest in the fort. Just overall go across the map, complete all the locations, that's really a smart thing to do. Are you out of side quests and locations? Well there's still something to do every day with the Nomads Bazaar that will of course give you a quest to for example raid some bandits, retrieve materials, every day it's different. So just logging on every day to get that reward is worth it since you get items from the e-store that you otherwise might have to buy with real money or maybe get a rare or legendary weapon. Just a free hacker chest every day is totally worth it. And then I have not even talked about the ultimate challenge in Assassin's Creed Origins that is starting on November 7th, or maybe it's going on while you watch this, and that is the Trials of the Gods. Vazing off these enormous bosses should be pretty hard, but can earn you some amazing loot. And these are limited time events that last one week at the time, but they should not only be a ton of fun to complete, but also again reward you with the best weapons, and this amazing Anubis outfit. I already told you about the Horde mode that will be coming early 2018 and this Trials of the Gods event is another way for Ubisoft to keep this game alive, keep you playing, so that after we hit the max level, after we finish the main story, we still got something to do. We still got a reason to return to this awesome game. So yeah, there's already a ton of awesome stuff you can do in Assassin's Creed Origins, but that list will keep growing, so that's really awesome. If I missed anything that you can do on the max level, please let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe for way more Assassin's Creed Origins content. I got way more content planned and coming your way talking about the trials of the gods of course. Doing tips and tricks on how to defeat the boss and also showing you the weapon. Really can't wait for that event. November 7th is really really close. Of course check out my other videos that are on the channel right now. For example where I showed you the best shield in the game and also where I showed you how to get the Vire Staff. One of my favorite weapons in Assassin's Creed Origins. Like this video to support the channel. Thanks for watching and goodbye.